Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Hillbilly Military Modeling here and this is the final video uh, for our Sturmkeschutz uh, SDKFZ167 otherwise known as a Stug 4 uh, by Academy in 135th scale. This is Painting and Weathering Part 2. So what we're going to be doing is using pigments first. These are Vallejo pigments. Brown iron oxide, old rust, rust and new rust. We're going to be using this on our exhaust. So the first thing that I've chosen to do is take the darkest pigment. I'm going to use water as a transfer medium. And we're just going to cover the surface of the muffler and the exit pipe that's welded to the muffler. That's going to give us our base rust color. Now you kind of have to dab this on because if you try to brush it you're just going to move the pigments around. And you can see here where I've pretty much got the rust where I want it. I'm going to do the end caps as well. And I'm going to come back in with uh, the next lightest color, the old rust. And we're going to do smaller areas. And then we're going to progress through our colors until we get to our lightest color, which we're going to use the least of. And just have that right around weld seams and a few spots on the muffler. You can't really tell until it dries, and you can see here where uh, pigments have fully dried. And what I'm doing right now is I'm coming in and I'm very, very lightly blending just the edges of these to smooth them out. Now these pigments are going to darken some when uh, I clear coat over top of it. And I always like to clear coat over these things because I, I don't want all these pigments flaking off and uh, falling on to my model shelf, you know, while the models are on display. So I'll fix them in place. And here you can see uh, what the result is. Now when you do do the blending, don't scrub on these dry pigments too much or you will wipe them completely off your model. So while we got the pigments out, I'm going to use uh, Old rust, rust, and new rust. Um, I'm using a stippling brush here. And you can get these at your craft store for stippling on paint through stencils. That's what they're actually made for, but they do really good because they're nice and stiff. So, with this old rust, I'm also going to put this on our spare track sections. Our tracks have already been painted with the Vallejo uh, acrylic black when we first painted the model back in the first video. And that gives us a rough textured surface that allows these pigments to stick real good. They don't stick very well on a, say, gloss clear coat or any gloss paints. You want to make sure that you cover every single area. Put it on kind of thick. Because I like to go back and seal my tracks so that the pigments are fixed. And when you do that, that darkens and it also fades um, these pigments some. So I'm coming back with the rust color and I'm just going to put it in certain areas and then I'll use the lighter rust and just highlight certain spots on the tracks just randomly. And here you can see we've got the tracks all rusted up and they're ready for coating. with that clear coat. 
So next we're going to turn our attention to the hull this and uh, also our drivetrain. This is Vallejo Thick Mud Acrylic and it's a real thick, pasty, uh, well bodied weathering paste, <laughs> I guess is what you'd call it. Uh, but since it is a acrylic, it's going to dry kind of fast. So uh, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to work on the drive sprocket and I'm going to build up a layer of thick mud uh, in the center. I'm not worried about what color it is because we're going to come back with uh, some different products and change the colors. I just want to make sure that we have some uh, body built up. It'll give us a more realistic look. So this acrylic mud is it tends to stick more to the brush once you get it on there than it does the parts. <laughs> you kind of have to work it. And there we go. So now we're going to turn our attention to the running gear and the sides of the hull. And if you can imagine where this mud is going to come off of the tracks and be deposited in its thickest portions on the lower hull is going to be right around um, the bogies, uh, any brackets or anything on the side of the hull. I'm just kind of stippling and sticking it on there. And you're going to want to get it where you want it and then just leave it. Uh, don't wait too long to make an adjustment because this stuff dries rock hard when it's on there. Now it is water soluble and we've got it on the back of the vehicle as well there. So now we're going to use this uh, AK Interactive Earth Effects Enamel. This is a matte dark earth wash. Uh, it being an enamel product, it's really easy to use. And you can come back at any time with some enamel thinner and blend it or remove it if you need to. Uh, so I'm just putting this on over top of our Vallejo Thick Mud. And this is going to give us the color that we want or that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go around the bogies and around our return roller brackets. I'll also do the springs and giving everything a, uh, a look of mud down low on the vehicle. So when you're doing the hull, don't forget to come back and do your running gear here. I'm doing the uh, front drive sprocket. And you can always blend it later with a little bit of thinner. Don't forget to do the back side of the sprockets because a portion of this drive sprocket will be visible from the front of the vehicle. Just making sure I'm getting it in there. And of course, we're going to do our idler as well. Just making sure I get a good coat on the inside there. 
So now we're going to take the same earth effects from AK and I'm going to thin some of it and I'm going to use it as a real light wash. So I'm just coming in uh, on the side of the hole here and just putting it on and it's going to deposit itself on there. You can't really tell right away until once these uh, the, the thinner dries off of it um, and it's going to deposit these uh, pigments right on the side of the vehicle toning it down some and we're going to come back and do that on the rear of the vehicle as well And this is a good time to use it for um, not only on the body of the vehicle, but also on your road wheels and a little bit on your drive sprocket and your idler. Just remember that you need to go ahead and do your drivetrain uh, while you're doing uh, the vehicle. That way everything is layered in unison. And that's the key to having a nicely weathered vehicle is by layering your different effects. And I'm going to come along the edge of the fender with it as well. And just like that. So now we're going to go to the tracks while we wait for the body to dry. And I'm going to use this Testers Enamel uh, Flat Steel. And we're going to do some dry brushing. And that's going to highlight the contact areas of the track that would make contact on road surfaces where you're not going to have any rust, all that's going to be worn off. And you just lightly brush it on. I'm using a, a wide angle brush here. If you do get a little bit too much in one spot, you can come back to some thinner and kind of blend it out. Just go lightly. This process goes pretty quick. So now we're going to use some AK Interactive Enamel Streaking Grime. And we're going to turn our attention to the inside of the Schutzen Armor. So the effect here I'm going for is to have some streaks that'll still be visible once these panels are mounted on the vehicle because we do have that large bracket that goes across the top of the armor and so I'm just coming in and I'm putting a little bit of the streaking grime on in the areas where it would build up around these brackets it looks a little thick right now but we don't have to wait for this to dry we're going to take some enamel thinner on a clean brush and we're just going to come down on both sides of the streaks and if you get too much thinner in one area just move on to the next one and come back to it otherwise you stand the chance of washing out uh, the streaking ground and the more you go over it uh, the thinner and more blended these streaks will become but you need to work from one side to the other side you don't want to blend straight down because uh, if you do you stand the chance of just removing all of it and so we're going to do this and keep cleaning our brush and going back and using 
clean enamel thinner to continue the streaking process. Now if you get something too long or a big blob of streaking grime or something that you don't like, if it doesn't look natural, uh, you can come back in with the clean uh, enamel thinner and you can clean it right off. And being able to clean these off if you do make a mistake is what makes them so easy to work with. I just find that when it comes to dry brushing and using streaking grime here as you can see and there's also the rust effects um, these enamels are very easy to work with now you don't want to try to use an acrylic for this because once an acrylic dries you're pretty much stuck with it So now we're going to continue using the streaking ground. Now I've got these two brushes, one for applying, that's the small brush, and then the worn out brush for blending. Uh, I'm just going to do the same thing that we did on the shoots and armor. And we're going to set up our streaks, and then I'm just coming back over top of it and in between of the edges and just kind of fading these streaks in and we'll use a little bit of a stippling motion on the flat horizontal surfaces and the other good thing about uh, streaking grime is we can use it to simulate oil spills and here I'm putting it on the uh, rear engine deck next to the access uh, covers where the crew may have spilled a little bit of oil some drips here and there to help bring up the level of realism for our model now I'm going to use some Vallejo pigment carbon black and what we're going to do with this is we're going to um, simulate a little bit of carbon buildup and some burn marks on the muzzle of our main armament here. So we're just going around uh, the exit hole and we're also going to bring this pigment in around these uh, vents, the back side of these vents where the exhaust gas from the round going off is going to impact on that muzzle brake. And I think that looks more realistic than painting the whole thing black. Gives us a nice effect. Here I have some stretch sprue and we're going to use these for our antennas. And all you need is a little bit of CA glue because we're gluing these to a painted surface. And so I, I'm trying to get this straight, <laughs> but uh, CA glue sets up real fast, which is also called super glue. Sorry about the aspect ratio on this, but I figure you guys can get the, uh, the gist of what I'm doing here. I'm coming in with uh, Panzer Gray. This is Vallejo Acrylic and I'm painting our antennas. Kind of gives the antennas a different color and it differentiates and a little bit more accent. Time to paint our figure. So I took the base black color and added a few drops of white just so that it's not so black, if that makes sense to you. And I sprayed it from an angle from above his head. Um, so that I'm, I was hoping to maintain some dark shadows under his pockets. So then I switched over to uh, 
coil paints, ivory black and titanium white. I put them on a piece of cardboard to soak out most of the linseed oil. And now I'm mixing up a dark gray color. And I'm just checking to see that it is a noticeable difference <laughs> between his black jacket. And I'm going to come in with this oil paint using uh, enamel thinner as a carrier, which will also help to disperse more of the linseed oil and help with drying. And I'm just going to do the very bottoms of his pockets, the bottom edge of the flaps of the pockets, uh, just all these low areas that would be more in sunlight. So kind of think of it as um, the sun being above and where the light would actually highlight parts of his uniform. So this is the first time I've tried this. I've seen other guys do it and so I thought I'd give it a shot. So uh, if it doesn't work out too good then well we'll do better on the next one. <laughs> so, um, so I've done his collar as well. <clears throat> I'll also do all the high points on the back of his jacket, the sleeves, um, just all the high areas. And then I'm coming back with a clean brush with a little bit of enamel thinner and I'm blending. So the ideal here is to get a, a blended gradient from the lighter color to the darker color. I don't want to push the, the light color up onto the darker areas. I don't know if that's making any sense to you guys, but then again, I really don't know all the terminology. I probably should when it comes, comes to painting, but um, it's just a, a matter of fading. And I just keep kind of working over it. Now, tank crewmen, their jackets were black. So we're kind of playing with this, trying to get a worn, black, faded look. And it's starting to come together here. It, it takes a little while to do. So to show you what I came up with after I got done with all my fading and blending. Uh, I also used the same thing, uh, the same method on, the, on uh, the tanker's hat. He doesn't look too bad, so in my hillbilly fashion, I'm going to go with it. So, on to the next step. So what we need here is a skin color. So I'm going to use yellow ochre, scarlet, and titanium white oils. And I put them on the cardboard and let it soak out the linseed oil. Normal thing to do, trying to get rid of all that linseed oil. Um, I put this on a painter's palette, which I just happen to have. <laughs> so, uh, not that I'm much of a painter, but... The attempt here is to blend us and make a reasonable skin tone. So once I settle on the color, I'll go ahead and paint this um, onto our figure. So it's face and hands. Uh, unfortunately, it's got a lot of linseed oil left in it and it took forever for this to dry, but it looks pretty plausible so we're gonna go with that and we're gonna let that dry so while our figure is drying uh, we're gonna continue with our weathering so this is a uh, Tamiya weathering master set a what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this uh, light sand color that would be the one in the middle and this set comes with a applicator with a brush on one end and 
a cosmetic sponge on the other. And so you just kind of rub it on there and rub it on your model. It's not hard to do at all, but uh, this is the first time I've ever used this. I've had this set since, gosh, several months. Uh, I don't know how long, but uh, the effect I'm trying to get here is to have our chipping, which we spent so much time on and looks so good, to be able to show through. So we're going to go with a light dusting effect. And right now this light sand is what I have that's going to allow us to do that. Now this being the first time that I've used this, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. So I just keep applying it and when it runs thin I dip the applicator and rub a little bit more on and we just keep working with it. Now it does have the brush and you can use the brush to blend the edges. And that brush comes in handy too because I do go back over the vehicle and do all of the flat horizontal surfaces with it and also the back of the vehicle and the brush allows me to get into all the little nooks and crannies on the back of the vehicle. So it's looking pretty decent so I decided to continue on with it. Now at this point the good thing is that if you don't like this effect when you first start you can use a little bit of warm water and a soft brush and you can just wash these pigments right off of the model. So I'm going to go on down the edge of this and also do the inside surface a little bit just for continuity. But I do go over the, uh, the road wheels and the drive sprockets and like I say those horizontal surfaces. And that kind of ties all the weathering in together. Successful weathering is always going to be how you layer your weathering. And I just imagine this vehicle being on the uh, steps of Russia in say 1943. In the summer kind of dusty. So layering all your different uh, weathering products is very important because that's what gives the vehicle depth. And as you can see here, I've gone and done this side of the vehicle. I've gone over the road wheels, drive sprocket, idler, chutes and armor. I've also done the fenders and the front glacius. So, I've decided to detail our headphones that our crewman is going to be wearing and I thought it would look pretty good if there were some actual wires running to his headphones. So what I'm doing here is I have this 18 gauge automotive electric wire and I'm just stripping the insulation off of it. So I just need one strand of this wire. And here I've separated some strands. I'm going to pull one of these out and we're going to use that to wire up the headphones. So as you can imagine when you strip it out of a coiled wire set, the wire is, it's got this twist to it. So I'm just using my tweezers and my cutting mat and I'm rolling it on the cutting mat and what that's going to do is that's going to straighten the wire out. So as you can see here we now have a pretty straight piece of wire.
Yeah, that worked pretty good. So now it's ready for us to bend in whatever shape we need it in. So what we have here is a piece of polystyrene sheet. Uh, small as I can <laughs> actually work. I've drilled a couple of holes in it to accept the wire from the left and right of the headphones. And I'll cut that off and drill another hole in the bottom of it. I want to use this uh, medium CA glue to glue the wire to our block. So we have one wire coming in the bottom. And then we'll have one wire left and one wire right going to our headphones. And here I've got that all glued up. So I drill a little bitty hole to accept this wire. And we painted it black. Now we'll come in and um, use some testers uh, flat steel enamel just to dry brush the headphones a little bit. And a little note on the painting of the face and hands on our uh, crew member here. Uh, after the oil paint was dry, I came in with uh, some Tamiya Brown panel liner and just coated the skin surfaces with that. And I allowed that to dry and then I dry brushed it with some enamel thinner to highlight uh, the higher portions of his face and nose. And so here we are with the finished model. Uh, weathering complete. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with the results. So what we're looking at here is the model without the chutes and armor on it. This is the Academy Kit number 13235. Just in case you guys might want to build this kit sometime. So what I paid for this kit is $2249 USD. All in all, for the price, uh, this is a really, it's a decent kit, it's a nice kit. And here we are with the shoes and armor uh, applied to it. I want to give a special shout out to Jeff's Model Garage. Uh, thank you Jeff so much uh, for subscribing to the channel and for recommending me for all of your viewers. Um, I really appreciate that and you've done a fantastic job for the modeling community. And so with that guys, I want to thank all of my subscribers and uh, if you're the first time to this channel and you would like to see more of this, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and there's more models to come. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and please stay safe and I will see you on the next build. Thanks for watching.